It is time to start working with our new friends, Enable Secret and Enable Password, see what they're all about and where we use them. And a couple of Cisco switch defaults as far as passwords go that might surprise you. But first, what I wanted to do was show you what happens when you log out of a switch and then you come back and you want to log in. And I'm getting a message, Switch One Console is now available. This is the switch we were on. I changed the host name to Switch One, put a couple of lab commands on so we could work with it. And then that's it. So press return to get started. This is the screen you would come up to. And you see the little tiny prompt there at the bottom. It does leave you a lot of space. And this simply means that we are in what they call user exec mode. And you may have seen this one before. You really can't do a whole lot from here and you can't do any configuration at all. For that, I've got to get, at least get into enable mode uh, or privileged exec mode, which is the proper term for it, but everybody calls it enable mode because that's the word you type to get into it. You see the arrowhead change to a pound sign. We're in privileged exec mode and we're ready to get to work. Maybe though, we want to put a little bit of password protection here when it comes to enable mode. Because as I said, if I wanted to from this point on, I could write erase the switch. I could write erase the switch delete a file with all the VLAN information in it, VLAN.dat, reload it, and that switch is initialized. So maybe we don't want anybody to be able to sit down here and do that. And we can, pr we can protect enable mode with both the enable secret and enable password passwords. And when you configure both, the enable secret always takes precedent over the enable password. And I'm gonna configure both right now and we've got last resort and use TACACs, and those are not options we need yet. But notice password and secret both mention privileged level. They're talking about privilege exec, which again is what everybody just calls enable mode. I try to call it privilege exec once in a while to get you used to that. Notice password just says to assign the privilege level password. Secret says privilege level secret. So what is so secret about the enable secret? Well, we're gonna put both in here and we'll see. First, I'll go with enable secret and I'll make that CCNA and I will make enable password CSET. So that's really it. We didn't get any messages. There are no real options here. You're either putting in a secret, enable secret in or enable password or you are not. So I'll just go ahead and do a quick save. And I'm going to log out. And when you log out again, here's what you come back to. You're going to be sitting down. It's going to say switch one console zero. That's what that con zero indicates. And press return to get started. And there's user exec. So where does the password come in? The password comes in when you enter enable. Hmm. So I could get into user exec but I can't get into privilege exec without that enable password. So now, of course, since we do know that the enable secret was CCNA, the enable password was CSENT, if I put in CSENT, it's not gonna work. And I get prompted for another password. Let's try, let's say I try CSENT again. And I get mad and I think if I enter it the third time, it'll actually go in correctly. And I just get a message that says, bad secrets. Hmm, that's a little bit of a hint as to what I'm actually entering because I expected to say something very generic, but it's saying, hey, you have the wrong enable secret. Hmm, one thing you also notice is that not only did CSENT not appear when I entered it, nothing appeared. We didn't get a cursor. We didn't get cursor movement since we had no cursor. And we don't even get asterisks, as in time-honored hardware and software from other companies. We don't get anything. And that's actually a built-in security defense. And it really stops people just from looking over your shoulder and seeing your password. And maybe you don't have a lot of people around your server room that shouldn't be in there. I certainly hope not. But, you know, maybe you're the only person that's supposed to know these passwords. And you have another admin who just walks by and he sees you typing in CCNA for this and just makes that note. That's where problems can actually start. And we're going to see something else here soon that's going to help you defeat what we semi-jokingly call the over-the-shoulder network attack. But right now what I'm going to do is re-enter enable, put in the correct password, and now you'll notice the prompt change. I put in CCNA that time, but again, anybody looking over my shoulder could not see what I was entering. They could have counted my keystrokes if they were really paying attention, but even that is not going to tell them what it is. 
let's do a show run here or show running config and at the very top here you're going to see a major difference between enable secret and enable password we already know one and that is that enable secret takes precedent over enable password the other one is this hieroglyphic we seem to have next to enable secret first we have a number five we definitely didn't enter the number five and then we have this and it's dollar signs and numbers and lowercase letters and uppercase letters I guarantee you if you enter that for the enable secret it will not work because this is not what we put in obviously it is the encrypted version of what we put in and what happens is uh, message digest 5 MD5 an algorithm was run against what we entered and this is the result so the thing is we put the result in for the enable secret first off you'd have to cut and paste it I don't think anybody could type that accurately not even me um, you're not going to get in. But the thing is, again, someone can't look over your shoulder and say, oh, okay, the enable secret is CCNA, because not too many people are going to look at that and say, oh, okay, that's CCNA. The number five there, by the way, refers to the level of encryption. The levels are zero through seven. We're going to see some sevens here later on, but uh, and zero would be just a clear text password. The thing is, though, and I'm not telling any tales out of, out of turn or anything, because Cisco will tell you the exact same thing. Their own documentation mentions it. This is a very, very easily broken level of encryption. Very easily broken. You could go out and get a program and crack this password in just seconds. It's not hard to do. So Cisco will even warn you in several of their online documents, you know, don't depend on this to stop all intruders. But again, it's a great way to stop what we like to call the casual intruder, someone who might not even be thinking about doing it or using this password for nefarious gains, but sees it and then starts thinking about it. So it's just a good way to hide it from people who might see your config, even print it out. You know, you could print this config out and maybe someone gets it out of the printer who shouldn't have, and they would not be able to tell what your enable secret is. Because as, as I look at I look at it this way, an easily hacked encrypted password in the config is still better than a clear text password just sitting there waiting for the wrong person to see. So we definitely want to watch out for that. So uh, a couple of things there, you know, with the enable passwords and the enable config. Also, I just wanted to point out that you will see these closer to the top of your config. Now, when we were talking about that con zero, you know, we kept seeing it. Let me show it to you one more time here. Switch one con zero is now available. That's actually what I am using to connect to this particular switch. It's the console port. And I'm gonna do a whole show config here and just scroll down, sorry about that. And your lines are down here at the bottom. Now these line VTYs here, the VTY lines, they're for Telnet and SSH connections. They are for people connecting remotely to your switch. We are going to configure those later. But coming up next, we're going to take a look at the console port. And I got a couple lab commands here I put on there, but there's no password protection for it yet. And we're going to fix that coming up next.